the ITU has evolved into a circuit of races. And the speed at which you have to swim is incredibly fast. If you're fast in the run, and you can keep up on the bike and the swim, you're gonna win a lot of races. What's up, Trainiacs? Today, I want to talk about ITU triathlons. Now, I know for a fact that ITU triathlons explained is something that people are searching for out in the interwebs. And that tells me that there's some misunderstandings about what ITU triathlons are, at least a little bit of curiosity. So, ITU Triathlons, it's the International Triathlon Union that was formed in the 80s and essentially the goal of the International Triathlon Union was to get triathlon into the Olympics. They successfully did that and it generated the Olympic distance triathlon of 150 meter swim, i.e. 0.9 miles, a 40 kilometer bike, 24 to 25 miles, and then a 10K run about 6.1 miles. And these races right now are typically being won on the ITU circuit around an hour 46, hour 47, like crazy fast. Now I mentioned there the ITU circuit. The ITU has evolved into a circuit of races that throughout the year, triathletes compete in and they accumulate points to basically notch their way up the International Triathlon Union Triathlon World Rankings. At the end of the year, there is a winner of the overall championship race and there's a winner of who has accumulated the most points. So the ITU is a governing body. It's also involved in triathlon in the Olympics and it runs the ITU circuit, which pinnacles at the Olympic Distance World Championship. And because of that, the trickle down effect of those greasy fast ITU athletes being developed up means that the ITU circuit also kind of trickles down, trickles down, growing up. Basically, the junior programs all around the world are like feeder systems for the ITU distance races. And why that is, is because ITU distance races tend to be either sprints of 750 meters, 20K on the bike, and then a 5K run, or that Olympic distance. And that's a very, very fast race meant for younger athletes. As people get older in triathlon, basically any sport, they tend to lose their explosive speed and gain in endurance. So you look at people like Alistair Brownlee, Javier Gomez, Jan Fredino, especially right now, Marinda Carfrey, Daniela Reef, that are coming up and basically graduating out of the sprint Olympic distance. And because they aren't fast enough to compete at that anymore, they start competing in things like half Ironmans and full Ironmans. And right now, because this is one of the first times in all of history that we've had people develop through the entire ranks of just like greasy fast, crazy, really close to blacking out in the race you're going so fast kind of speed, they're transferring that over into the long course races and making those times really fast. Former ITU athlete Tim Don just broke the Ironman distance record. Brent McMahon just beat the course record that stood for a long time in Lake Placid. The ITU triathlons are very, very different than the long distance half Ironman and full Ironman distances that ITU races typically have a dive start going off of a dock because there are anywhere from 40 to 50 people. It's not so congested that they have to get everyone out in the water for safety. And the speed at which you have to swim is incredibly fast. There is absolutely no pacing in ITU sprint and Olympic distance races. It's been said that you can't win the race in the swim, but you can definitely lose the race in the swim. And why this is, is if you aren't 
aren't able to swim fast enough to stay in that front pack in the swim, you're going to not be in the front pack on the bike and you are gonna have to work really hard to catch up. You're gonna toast out your legs. They're not gonna be fresh enough for the run, which is where most races are won. Then getting onto the bike, ITU races are draft legal and they made that decision back when they were creating the rules for the Olympics because they did not want a race to be won or lost on a crash. Is that how it worked? Something like that. Basically, they wanted to level out the bike portion of the race so that it wasn't so bike heavy. So ITU races, you'll see a big pack of riders. They're gonna be having to ride on road bikes, not triathlon bikes, with a tiny little set of aero bars off the front. Then finally, when you get onto the run, it is so absolutely blazing fast that basically the fastest runners in the field are the winners. Because everyone in the front group is biking together, everyone is getting out onto the run together. So it's essentially a running race towards the end of it. That's why you have the fastest runners in the world in triathlon, like Alistair Brownlee, Javier Gomez, particularly now Gwen Jorgensen. Holy shirt, Gwen Jorgensen. If you're fast in the run, and you can keep up on the bike and the swim, you're gonna win a lot of races in ITU. Now, is all of this to say that ITU is better, not as good as Ironman distance racing? No, it's very, very different. I would actually argue that it, it takes a much more talented athlete to reach the pinnacle of ITU distance racing. Take for example, Jacques, the third person in our long swim. He was training to go up through the ITU ranks and what he found is that he was progressing at the same level as all the athletes around him all across the country and eventually this guy was working hard, that guy was working hard. Everyone was working hard, everyone wanted it and it just happened to be genetics that would allow a few people to keep rising and reach that pinnacle of the sport. Now. That's not to say that you can get away with crap genetics in long distance racing, but because it's such a longer day, it's more about endurance, suffering, maybe having just a really strong bike and surviving throughout the run. The field is kind of leveled out, especially in the age groupers. And long ago, you would have a lot of athletes that just weren't fast enough in ITU, went into long course racing, did quite well. And I gotta say that short course racing, sprints and Olympics, holy hell do they hurt. It's short, but my goodness, like you try getting your heart rate to about 175 and then holding it for two hours. Oh my God, it is hard. So there you go, triathletes, trainiacs, there's everything you want to know about ITU distance triathlons, but we're afraid to ask. Later.